Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Jordan. I'm so excited to be starting this video. I've been wanting to film this for a while. It's taken a lot of prep, but I wanted to make sure that I had all of my ducks in a row and recommendations ready. This is essentially going to be a full recommendation video for books that you can get through Book of the Month, as well as an entire rundown of what the service is, what you're getting, would I recommend it, or how I would approach being a member of Book of the Month. I will start out this video by saying I am not sponsored in any way by Book of the Month. I wish I was. They sponsor a ton of creators here on booktube but i am just a regular old member i have been a member for about a year and a half and i've been very intentional with my membership and with how i use the service of book of the month so i'm really excited to talk through all of it and here's the rundown of how this whole video is going to work i'm going to start with an entire overview of book of the month so everything that they've done so far in their history as a service what's all included what recent changes have come up to the service and where it stands now and then i'm going to get into recommendations because obviously book of the month has a huge backlog of titles that they've offered and that you can still get through the service. So I'm going to tell you which books I recommend of the many that I have read from their catalog. And then lastly, I'm going to touch on my personal opinion of Book of the Month and whether I think it's worth it or what type of person I would recommend subscribe to this service. If you're not already a member, kind of the pros and cons of what Book of the Month is because it's very polarizing. So I want to give you my opinion on it all and whether I think you should sign up for Book of the Month or continue being a member if you are already one. So let's get into it because that is a lot to cover. So to start, Book of the Month has been a service since February of 2015. So that's over seven years that they've been a service. I only became a member about a year and a half ago so I considered myself relatively late to the game when it comes to signing up for book of the month but I know I wasn't even aware of it seven years ago so I definitely think it's grown in popularity within these last few years and a somewhat of a household name now in the bookish community. It is a monthly subscription service so you pay the monthly fee which is $15.99 right now I will get into that price change and you get to pick one of usually five books that they pick as their main selection options. You pick one of those five that you get sent to you for that $15.99 fee. The idea is that those five books have been already curated by the people at Book of the Month. They are always new releases, sometimes early releases. They are hardcover books and you get to pick one for $15.99. And one nice thing about Book of the Month is that if you don't like any of the books that they've chosen or you're not that interested in them, you can skip that month for free. That means they just roll over your credit or they just don't charge you for that month and you can just continue the next month for free. So that is really nice. You don't have to feel pressured to pick a book for that $15.99. If you don't really want any of them, you can skip that and your membership continues on to the next month. You can also add on books if you would like. Every month they have a small selection of add on books that they add to their collection that are also, you know, new release books that you can pick or you can also pick almost any of their backlisted titles. So any book that they've picked as a previous book of the month main selection or any of their previous add-ons, you can also go back and pick one of those to add on to the current month. And that is only for $10.99. So that is kind of the pitch of book of the month is that they are relatively affordable prices for brand new hardcover books. And you do have a really vast selection of books, especially with each month, that collection just keeps growing bigger and bigger. One note is that as I was looking on book of the month's website to look at all the titles, there are some books that for the most part are much older and much less popular that are no longer available through their website. I'm assuming for those books they have run out of their stock and there's just not enough demand for those titles to reprint them in the book of the month copies. So those ones are no longer available as add-on picks but in my opinion that's very few and the vast majority of their entire collection you can still pick and add on at any time. In those seven years, they have offered over 450 books through their main picks as well as add-ons. It was a little hard to get an exact number for this because it's very easy to find a record of each month and what their main picks were. You can scroll back all the way to February of 2015. But finding the add-ons for each month has been a little bit harder for me. So I tracked down the ones that I could, but I know I'm missing a few, but over 450 books. I have read an estimated 85 of those. Again, it's a little tricky to find all the books that have been offered and match up with what I've read. Not all of those 85 have been through Book of the Month. Obviously, I've only been a member for about a year and a half, but I've read 85 of the titles that have been offered through Book of the Month. 
most of them being purchased or read through the library or read other ways, not just book of the month copies. In case you're curious, of those 85 books, I've enjoyed just less than half of them, about 47%, which doesn't sound great, but when you only count the books that I got through book of the month, which is only 22 books, I've actually enjoyed 77% of those, which that tells me that I'm much more selective when it comes to book of the month books. You know, if I'm picking something up from the library or via audio, I might pick it up even if it's not my preferred genre or even if the synopsis doesn't sound like something I would love. But when it comes to picking book of the month books that I know I'm going to own physically and I only get to pick, you know, the one book as my main pick, I probably am more selective and pick a book that I think I am more likely to enjoy. That seems to be true. Some recent changes to the service, as I've alluded to, they have grown their main selection of monthly picks from five to up to seven, which just means obviously more of a selection for their main monthly picks. I think the idea of this was potentially so that they could have um, a combination of lesser known titles, more diverse titles, as well as maybe the more mainstream and hyped up books. I have yet to see that hypothesis really come to fruition, but we will see in the future as we see more and more monthly picks, of course. They have also recently raised their prices by $1. So previously it was $14.99 for your main pick and $9.99 for every add-on. They have raised that to now $15.99 for your main pick and $10.99 for your add-ons. In my opinion, that price increase seems completely fair with everything that's going on right now with supply chain and with the economy and everything. But that has been a topic of conversation for people recently is that price increase. They have also added what they're calling the Blue Box Boutique, which is like a members only store for bookish merch type items. So this includes like t-shirts, socks, coasters, candles, pins, magnets, notepads. I have not purchased anything from that boutique, but I did get sent these socks from Book of the Month last year after I completed like the yearly challenges they include. They still have the tag on them. I have not worn them because I don't really wear fun socks like this, but this is the only item from that boutique that I own. I have not purchased anything else. I don't really plan on purchasing anything at this point. They do not scream high quality to me personally, but they are available for Book of the Month members if you're looking to get some additional bookish Book of the Month merch. And then also recently, Book of the Month has started a bookish podcast called Virtual Book Tour, which seems like it's going to be interviews with authors. I have not listened to it yet. It literally just got announced and just started, but that is another Book of the Month related thing. <laughs> And then the very last thing I think you need to know from an overview standpoint of Book of the Month is the BFF status. This is something you receive as a member after 12 monthly boxes have been shipped to you. So not just 12 months of being a member, but you actually have to pick a book all of those 12 months. If you skip any months in there, then those do not count towards your BFF months of status or whatever. So once you've had 12 boxes shipped to you, you've picked 12 books, then you are a Book of the Month BFF. And with that, you get some perks. You get a welcome tote, which I have because I actually just recently hit that 12 book mark. So I got my book of the month tote, which actually is pretty heavy duty, I think. You get a free add-on book during your birthday month, which by the way, you can roll over if you get to your birthday month and you don't like any of the picks. And so you wanna skip that month. From what I hear, you can email them or call them and they will roll that credit over to the next month for you. You also for free can get one of the book of the month book of the year finalist books at the end of the year. Book of the month always does like a little awards thing where they have their members vote on their favorite book from that year. And if you're a BFF, you can get a copy of one of those books for free. As a BFF, you also get 20% off the Blue Box Boutique and you apparently also get exclusive service access, which I don't know a ton about what that means, but I'm guessing if you have like customer service issues or something like that, they'll give you better service. I don't know. I've never used it, but it is listed as a perk. And then while I'm looking at them, I thought I would also mention, in case you didn't know, if you're not a member, every month that you pick a book and get a box, you also get a free bookmark. And they're just like paper, cardstock paper. They're not super fancy or anything, but they do have kind of quippy little quotes on them. Like this one says, I love having the last word. One says, new books, same laundry I'm not folding. If you wish upon a star, you might read your TBR. So they're kind of funny. I mean, they're free, so it's not like it's a worth it or not worth it type thing. I do keep them and collect them, but I don't really use them all that often because again, they are just plain cardstock, so they're not super durable. Okay, so with that, 
overview out of the way, let's get into the book recommendations. I separated this into genre, into basically my three most read genres, which are mystery thrillers, science fiction, and contemporary romance. Book of the Month does offer other genres for sure. They offer a ton of fantasy. I just am not a fantasy reader. They've got a good amount of historical fiction and they do also at times offer nonfiction. So if any of those genres sound interesting to you, absolutely they're available through Book of the Month. I just don't personally have recommendations for them because I don't usually pick or read those genres. So let's start with the thriller recommendations and I'm actually going to start with the most recent thriller that I picked and that I read and that's Breathless by Amy McCulloch. This is a thriller set on a mountain. It's a group of expeditioners as they attempt to climb a mountain that's over 8,000 meters tall. We're following a journalist as she's writing a piece on the main mountaineer in this group. He's looking to set a world record and she wants to cover his story. So she is climbing the mountain with him and his group and someone turns up dead and it turns into basically a murder mystery. I really enjoyed this book and I would highly recommend it. It was a May pick and a May release, which is interesting because it is set in like a cold climate. But if it gets to winter and you're craving something like that, I think this will definitely scratch that itch. It's a nice mix between like an isolated closed circle mystery, but not too isolated and not too closed circle because they do come in contact with other climbing groups and things like that. And I also loved the mountaineering knowledge in here. I thought it made for a fun addition to a mystery thriller. It definitely didn't feel like every other thriller I've ever read. So if you're looking for something a little bit different, then I would recommend this one. Switching vibes completely, I would recommend Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. This is set on a tropical island, so it's completely different vibes, vacation island vibes. So if that's what you're looking for this summer, then this is what I would recommend that for. This has the premise of two best friends wanting to go to a remote island, so they hire this guy and his girlfriend to take them there on their boat. So the four of them go and weird things start happening on the journey. And once they get there, I thought this was very thrilling. I read it so fast and I was just in it for all of the island vibes. So if you do pick this one up, that is what I would recommend. Just go in looking for a fun time. Don't take it too seriously, but I think it's a super fun book. I would also recommend A Flicker in the Dark by Stacey Willingham. This follows a girl who lives in a small town. 20 years ago, her father was convicted of killing young girls in his town. He's been put away in jail, but now 20 years later, he's still in jail and similar murders are happening. So people are trying to figure out, is it a copycat killer or was this dad not really the actual perpetrator? So is the real killer still out there? It's a really fun kind of murder mystery, small town thriller. It's not the most mind blowing thing I've ever read, but it was definitely a fun time and I thought had a satisfying conclusion. Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney is not a super unknown thriller. If you read a lot of mystery thrillers, I'm sure you know about this book, but in case you don't, or in case you skipped this one, I do think it's worth a read. It's about this couple who is going to this remote, I think it's a church that has been renovated into like an Airbnb type situation for them to stay out. So they are completely isolated from other people trying to just reconnect and kind of save their marriage and things get weird. The next recommendation I have is Too Good to Be True by Carola Lovering. This one's interesting because I am not typically a domestic thriller lover, but this is about as close to domestic thriller as you can get and I still really enjoyed it. This has the trope of like a guy has a new girlfriend or fiance and his previous wife is still in the picture so there's some animosity there between the fiance and the old wife and things go from there. I will say that it's a lot more than that so if you also don't really like domestic thrillers because they're just dramatic and the same thing over and over again. I thought this was different and I thought this had some interesting twists that kept me on my toes. So I think it's worth a read, worth checking out. All right, next I would recommend Riley Sager books. I'm sure you're familiar with him. He's a thriller author who has five books out currently. I've just got a few of them shown here, but all five are available as add-ons through book of the month. I would recommend his first four especially, but I know others have loved his fifth book, so I'm not going to deter you from that one as well. But if you are looking for thrillers that are entertaining and twisty and not too dark or gory or anything, for the most part, they're pretty fun and pretty standard. I am on the Riley Sager train and so I would recommend you get on it if you're not already. <laughs> My personal favorite is Home Before Dark. This is like a haunted house type story where a main character is going back to her childhood home which her family lived in for only a few days and then quickly left because it was haunted or something and weird things were happening and then her father actually wrote a book about it and became super famous for it and now as an adult she is going back to the home because she has inherited it. So that's my favorite but again can't really go wrong with any of 
Riley Sayers books in my opinion. Similarly, I would recommend Ruth Ware if you have not picked her up already. I can't remember which books of her have been book of the month picks. I'll put all of them here, but I've obviously got one by one here to show you. This is actually kind of similar to Breathless now that I think about it, but a little bit different because this is about a group of employees who all work for the same company going on a corporate retreat up in the mountains and then someone turns up dead. They're trying to figure out who the killer is while they are trapped in this snowy cold mountain. So if that sounds like your jam, I'd recommend one by one. If that doesn't quite sound like your thing, I would recommend other Ruth Ware books. Similar to Riley Sager, I'd put her at like the fun level of thriller, nothing too deep or disturbing, nothing that's probably going to change your life or blow your mind, but thrillers that are just a fun ride. A few thrillers that I don't physically own, we've got Miracle Creek by Angie Kim. This is definitely much more mystery, much less thriller, and it does have like courtroom elements, which I know a lot of people don't love, but there are people who do. So if you like courtroom elements and haven't read this book, I would highly recommend it. We follow this immigrant family who owns this hyperbaric chamber that is used for like oxygen therapy treatments for different ailments and there is an accident that results in a trial and so we're following that trial and we're getting to know the family and all of the people who were involved in the accident and get to the root of the problem figure out was it actually an accident or were there more sinister motives at play I really enjoyed that one it's very different from most of the mystery thrillers that I read but it was a pleasant surprise and most of the people that I see read it end up enjoying it and then there is No Exit, which is kind of a cult classic, cult favorite. A lot of people love this book, so I am not original, but it is a true thriller in that you are following our main character in this super stressful, scary situation. She's just trying to get out of the situation. And so you're following her through that. Basically the premise is it's this girl driving to visit her mom. And while she's on that road trip, it starts blizzarding. She's forced to pull over and wait for the storm to pass at this rest stop. She's at the rest stop with like five other people. And while she's killing time there, she walks outside and sees in the back of somebody's car, a girl who's being held captive. So she then has to figure out who is it that's holding this young girl? How is she gonna get out of there at a time when there's no like cell service, they can't drive, all of that. Very exciting and was turned into a movie that I also enjoyed. So if you haven't watched that, I would recommend that movie as well. Oh, one more that I do own physically, Gone Girl by Gillian Flynn. This is another absolute classic, but you can get it through Book of the Month if you have not read it yet and are curious. This is kind of a domestic thriller about this man whose wife goes missing and the police are kind of targeting him because they think it's always the husband. You know, he's probably guilty for killing her or whatever. And so he is trying to prove his innocence and find his wife. Amazing twist classic book, highly recommend. And then the last thriller recommendation I have is a book that I do own, but I am currently lending to my mother. It is Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This is just one that I don't even think you need much of a synopsis going in. I just need to tell you to read it. It's a little bit polarizing, but it's worth it to get to the end, find out the final twist and decide for yourself whether you like it or not. I absolutely loved it. And I'm just gonna blanket recommend it because it's pretty popular. So you've probably heard of it, but if you haven't, this is your sign to read it. Okay, next category, let's get into contemporary books. In here, I have a couple that could probably be more classified as historical fiction, some that are romance and some that maybe have slight magical elements to it, but not too much because I don't enjoy that. The first is just gonna be an author. It's Taylor Jenkins Reid. I know these two books are both book of the month picks, but she might have additional ones as well. I just love everything she's ever written. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Malibu Rising are two of my personal favorites of her entire work. These two both happen to be more in the historical fiction realm. Evelyn Hugo is following this starlet named Evelyn Hugo who's telling her life story in which she has married seven men. And then Malibu Rising is actually following the family of one of the husbands in Evelyn Hugo, which is fun. It's not a sequel by any means. You can read this without having read this, but it's a fun tie-in. But this is kind of like a family study about this super over-the-top family with a famous dad. I just recommend it. And then we have Emily Henry. Two of her books are available on Book of the Month. We have Beach Read and People We Meet on Vacation. These are both romances. Beach Read is a little bit more serious. It's about two authors who don't really like each other. They know each other from college, but uh, rekindle a few years later. And then People We Meet on Vacation is about a guy and a girl who have been friends for several years. They go on vacation together every summer. Something happened last summer that kind of drove them apart. But now this summer they are rekindling and going on one last trip together and uh, possibly revitalizing some feelings they had for each other. I'm not a huge romance person, but these two both really worked for me. So I would say if you don't typically like romance, but want something to try in the genre, these two would be a good place to start. 
And then totally shifting gears, my next recommendation is The Death of Vivek Oji by Akweke Amezi. This is a contemporary book set in Nigeria about obviously Vivek Oji. It's really about his life discovering his sexual and gender identities and a lot of struggles he has with discovering those and uh, no spoiler that it results in his death and so it's all about the culmination of that event. Why did it happen? How is it affecting the people around him? Very emotional, very moving, and definitely one that gets you to think uh, from a perspective that you probably cannot relate to. At least that's the experience I had and I really appreciated it. It's a very short book so I think it's one of those that is worth a try even if it doesn't end up being your new favorite book. It will definitely expose you to some new thoughts and ideas that you probably have not read before. So this is high on my list to recommend. I also have On the Come Up by Angie Thomas. This is the author of The Hate You Give, which I know a lot of people have read and loved, but this is a different story. This is about 16 year old Brie who wants to become one of the greatest rappers of all time. And it's basically about her experience doing that, as well as of course her experience being a young black teenager. I think some people are hesitant to try this because it is young adult but I think it spans all age ranges and is definitely worth reading even as an adult. And then the next recommendation I have I'm really excited to talk about it's The Astonishing Color of After by Emily XR Pan. This is a book I don't get to talk a lot about but it's one of my all-time favorites. This book is mostly contemporary but there is a touch of magical realism because it's about this girl whose mother has died by suicide. And so obviously our main character and her father are deeply grieving and in the midst of her grief our main character thinks that her mom has been reincarnated as a bird and she keeps seeing this bird in her life and things that happen after her mother's death ultimately end up sending our main character to Taiwan to meet her mother's parents and form a relationship with them, which she did not previously have. This is so unlike any other book I've read before and so unlike most of the books that I read on a regular basis. I did not even care that it had a magical element. Usually that's something I just don't do in books, but this one transcended that. It was so emotional and such an entertaining and deep and heartfelt and emotional story that I was all in. So if that sounds like something you need in your life, I recommend giving this one a try. This one is on the longer side, so you will need to dedicate a good chunk of time to this book, but let me just tell you it is worth it. My next contemporary recommendation is Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine by Gail Honeyman. This is a book about our main character who is a woman that I would describe as the adult version of Amelia Bedelia, which is a children's book series in which the main character like takes everything super literally and doesn't have a lot of social awareness and sometimes asks questions that are like quote unquote dumb questions, just doesn't pick up on social cues or when people say things they don't mean, things like that. Eleanor is a lot like that and she is kind of struggling in life right now. She has a job that is kind of a slog for her. She has had some emotional family stuff happen recently and so she's just kind of going through it and it really doesn't help that she can't like talk to people and relate to people the same way other people seem to be able to. So she bottles a lot of it up and it's just about her going through that and dealing with it. There is a little bit of a romance but I wouldn't classify this as a romance. I would just classify it much more as like an individual self-discovery, self-realization story about this main character kind of learning more about who she is and learning to live in the world with what she has. And then I would recommend Little Fires Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This is a pretty popular book. You may have heard of it because of the TV show that was created by Reese Witherspoon from it. I have seen only a couple episodes. I didn't watch the whole thing, but I also don't really watch that much TV. But this is a contemporary story about this family that has a lot of dysfunction. There are like four different siblings and they don't really get along super well. And it's also about this adjacent family, about this mother and her daughter who kind of become intertwined with this family. The very first chapter of this book, or maybe it's a prologue, is about that main wealthy family's house being on fire. And then you kind of go back and learn about the events that led up to that. So it's very just dramatic and entertaining and it is heart warming and wrenching at times. It just makes you feel a lot of things. So if that's the kind of book you're looking for, this is the book that I would recommend for you. And then lastly, for contemporary books is a romance kind of. It's All the Ugly and Wonderful Things by Bryn Greenwood. This is, I believe, technically classified as an age gap romance, which is not something that I would have thought I would love. But to me, it is so much more than that. It's not just about a romance. It's about like this main character who is going through very difficult things and finds solace in this man 
who just happens to be much older than her. It's not like a passionate love affair or something like that. So I think that's what differentiates it from other age gap romances I've heard of. I would put this in more of just an emotional contemporary story, with a little bit of a romance that just happens to have an age gap. And so if that sounds interesting to you, I would definitely recommend picking it up because I have not heard many people who do read this say that they didn't like it. Oh, and then one more contemporary recommendation I have because it was kind of tucked behind the other books, but it's True Biz by Sarah Novick. This is a recent read of mine. This follows several different main characters that all go to a deaf boarding school and they all have very different experiences with deaf culture. That is something I personally have little to no experience with in my own life. So I really loved reading this book because it was like the perfect mix of educational for someone who doesn't know anything about sign language or deaf culture. It did do a lot of kind of teaching, which I appreciated, but it also was just like the story of these people's day-to-day -day lives and made it very clear that these people, these students have struggles that are the same as every other teenager just because they're deaf doesn't make them different in that way. So I thought it was a great combination of the two, you know, educational but also just basic life stories. There's a little bit of a mystery in here which I found to actually be the weakest part of this book and I really hated the ending and how that all culminated at the end, but I think the first 90% of the book is worth reading it for and maybe you would still like the ending. I don't know. But this one I would just highly recommend to people who don't know anything about deaf culture, haven't read any books about deaf characters before, and I would be very interested to hear thoughts from people who do know sign language, who are familiar with that culture, and how they enjoy this book because again I thought it did a nice job of explaining some of those concepts to a total newbie, but I wonder if that would be rudimentary for someone who already has that knowledge, or if it would be validating to see that, you know, expressed in a book where you typically don't see that type of information shared. I don't know. I would be curious to hear it, and so I would recommend it to you all. And then the last category of books I have to recommend are science fiction. This is shorter, so if you don't like science fiction, just bear with me. First author I'm going to recommend is Blake Crouch. This book, Recursion, as well as Dark Matter are both book of the month options. They are both sci-fi books that have to do with like parallel universes, time travel, dimension travel, all that kind of stuff. If you like that hypothetical stuff that gets you thinking, then I can't recommend these highly enough. They are very fast paced and entertaining, and I would say both of them have kind of like a little bit thrillery aspects to them. So even if you're not a super big science fiction fan, you still might be able to enjoy one of his books. And then next, I would recommend Andy Weir. He is one of my favorite authors of all time, but definitely one of my favorite sci-fi authors. He writes space books. So his first novel is The Martian, which has been turned into a movie you might have heard of or seen. This is about a main character who gets stranded on Mars. Then we have Artemis, which is set on the moon, and we're following our main character who's kind of like a thief criminal type person who lives on a colony on the moon. And then we have Project Hail Mary, which is about an astronaut who wakes up on a spaceship in the middle of deep space without any memory of who he is or how he got there. And it's all about him figuring out why he's on the spaceship, what was his mission, and can he complete it? Andy Weir is just amazing. His books are filled with science. I will say that if you don't like science, in your science fiction, you probably wouldn't like Andy Weir, but he incorporates a ton of humor as well. His characters to me are just so likable and relatable. And if you for some reason have not given him a try or haven't read all of his books, I would recommend picking the rest up. The next sci-fi rec I have is An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. This is a sci-fi book that's definitely set in like our real world. So if you don't like anything too out there, this might be a good pick for you. It's about our main character named April May who lives in New York City. And one day she was walking down the street and she notices this giant new statue that has come up out of nowhere. And she is like, huh, that's interesting. So she makes a YouTube video about it and that video ends up going viral. So now our main character is experiencing internet fame for the first time. She's navigating that. At the same time, the rest of the world is trying to figure out what is this statue? Where did it come from? How do we get rid of it? Why can't we move it? It's just very fast paced and entertaining. It also has like puzzles in it. If you like solving puzzles and riddles and games and things like that, this also has that. So it's a lot of fun. Getting to the end here, the next sci-fi wreck is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is about kind of this dystopian universes in where multiverse travel is possible. The only caveat is you cannot travel to a universe where your self is alive. You can only travel to places where your 
person has died. So our main character is super valuable because she has died in almost every universe except for her own so she can travel from universe to universe and get information. And then of course she ends up in a universe where she is still alive. So that causes problems. So if that premise sounds interesting to you, it goes from there and I would recommend you read the story. And then my last recommendation is Golden State by Ben H. Winters. This one I would say is verging on the line between sci-fi and dystopian. This is about a world where lying is illegal and we are following a main character who is basically an enforcer of that. And it's very interesting and entertaining. And I don't hear really anybody talk about it. So I would highly, highly recommend this if that premise sounds interesting at all. Or if you like Blake Crouch and similar books, then you might like this one. So that is my long list of book recommendations from Book of the Month. So if you have not tried any of those books and you've been thinking about whether or not to pick them up and you think they're worth a $10 add-on to Book of the Month, I would highly recommend it. But let's wrap up now with my final thoughts about Book of the Month as a service. Do I enjoy it? Do I think it's worth it? Do I think you should sign up if you're not already a member? Overall, yes. I think the price is worth it. I think the service is worth it. I do think $15.99 for a brand new hardcover book is a reasonable price. And I especially think $10.99 is an even more reasonable price for add-on books. Again, those are always hardcover as well. And a lot of times they have add-on options that aren't main options, but are also brand new releases. So I think that in itself makes it worth it. I also love that you can skip any month for free. It definitely takes the pressure off. It doesn't make you feel like you're spending money unnecessarily as long as you take advantage of that. I am someone who has no problem skipping a month if nothing sounds interesting to me. I don't feel like I'm missing out. It keeps me from hoarding book of the month copies that I'm never going to read. I just skip it and I move right along. But one of my biggest tips for book of the month if you want to become a member is to ask for gift membership as a Christmas or birthday gift. I have done this for the last two Christmases. I've asked for book of the month memberships. You can package like three, six or 12 month memberships into like a gift certificate type of thing. And then I'm able to redeem it on book of the month and they basically just show up as credits. So for example, this last Christmas, I was gifted a full year membership by my in-laws as well as a six month membership from my family. So I input all of that into the app and I started this year with 18 book credits and you can use those for the main monthly picks or add-ons. And I think that's just such a great way to try the service with little to no risk for you. That way you don't have any money into it. You don't have to consider like, is this worth buying through book of the month or could I order it on Amazon? You have the credits in your account. So it's just yours to decide where you want to spend them. So if you've got a birthday coming up, I would recommend asking for even just like a three month membership. That would be a great way for you to try out the service in case you're not sure if it's worth spending your own money on, or if you know that you would like the service but you can't afford that monthly fee or you don't want to have to spend, uh, you know, $15.99 every month for a book that you're not sure if you're going to like or not, a gift membership is a great risk-free way to do it. My opinion on the selection of books is I think it's okay. I think this is the big kicker on why Book of the Month is so polarizing because people have a lot of different opinions about whether Book of the Month should offer super hyped books or unknown books. I'm generally in the camp that because I'm signing up for it as a subscription service, I want the unknown books. I want this to recommend me books that I don't already plan on buying and that I might not have picked up if not for book of the month curating that book selection for me. That being said, I know that there's risk there that I might not like the book if I haven't vetted it myself first, but I always still read the synopses first and I figure out, is this a book that I think sounds interesting to me? Is this a genre I'm familiar with and I like, or am I kind of completely going out on a limb? Sometimes that happens and I get burned, but for the most part, I still have the autonomy to pick books that I think I am going to enjoy. They just might not be books that I had heard of before Book of the Month offered it as a selection. And I like that. I like getting recommended books that I have heard of before. I do also think uh, it makes a difference what genres you're into and how many different genres you're open to. I think that a lot of people who are book of the month members are mystery thriller fans and really only pick the mystery thriller books. And I think that limits you a lot because typically book of the month only picks like one thriller per month. So then your only choice is am I getting that thriller or am I not? And that leaves a lot more room for disappointment. Whereas if you're open to other genres, if you're a fan of multiple genres, you overall have a lot more books to choose from and that you might have a good chance of liking. So I would take that into account when considering whether or not to sign up for book of the month. 
And then again, I would also just recommend being open-minded and not having your mindset on a certain book being a pick for a particular month of book of the month. I have just been seeing so many people disappointed recently by books that haven't been picked as monthly selections. And I do get it because they kind of set a precedence there early on where they had authors where they selected every one of their books as book picks. And then their most recent one comes out and it's not a book of the month pick. And everyone's like, what the heck? Now all my books aren't gonna match. I get it, I really do. I'm not trying to shame you. I'm just trying to offer the perspective of what is the purpose of book of the month. I think it's about more than just the logo on the book. I do think it is about the book curation and about offering and selling books to an already cultivated audience that probably weren't going to pick up these books on their own. So that's how I go into it. And that way I'm really never disappointed. Again, I do skip months sometimes because sometimes there just aren't any books that look interesting to me. But because I didn't have any specific expectations, then I'm much less likely to be let down. Speaking of the logos on Book of the Month books, that's another hot topic that I actually don't think is that hot. I think most people enjoy Book of the Month logos. I'm gonna be an unpopular opinion and say that I hate them. I think it just breaks up the cover. Like I love this book cover and I wish it just didn't have this random square of red in the corner. And then same for the spine, especially as someone who organizes my shelves in rainbow order, it just aggravates me that this beautiful blue spine is broken up with a red piece on top. But that's a total personal preference. And obviously I've gotten over it because I still get Book of the Month books. But honestly, that's a consideration. If you are somebody who loves Book of the Month covers and you love the idea of having a big Book of the Month collection where all of the logos line up perfectly, I get it. And I think that's a perfect reasonable reason to be a book of the month member and to get books every month. That is just not the reason why I personally am a member. Let's see, getting to the end here. I think the extra shop, the blue box boutique is a little weak. I would want products that are just a little cuter and that look higher quality. I don't know, that shop just does absolutely nothing for me. I will not be buying anything from it in the near future. And I do wonder if it's making money for them or uh, how that's going. <laughs> And then the final thing I wanted to hit on is my pitch to you is if you become a book of the month member, read your book of the month books. <laughs> okay, I think that is everything I had to go over. Those are all of my thoughts on book of the month. I love the service. I'm going to continue being a member. I'm going to continue my book of the month reading vlogs, which I haven't even mentioned yet, but I do make reading vlogs where I vlog my updates and opinions as I read every single book of the month book that I get. That's one for me so that I can stay on top of my book of the month collection, but also for you in case you are a book of the month member and you've been wondering if the recent book of the month picks are good, then you can see some timely reviews with them. But that is how I personally stay on top of my book of the month TBR. And yeah, so now I would love to turn the discussion over to you. Are you a book of the month member? Are you considering becoming a book of the month member? Do you like the selection? Do you like the books that you've read from the service? What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comments. I would love to have some more conversation about it. But otherwise, I think this video is long enough, so I'll let you go. I don't have anything else. So thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in my next one.